Now the Bible doesn't tell us very much about Amasiah. What we do know about Amasiah is that he was a soldier in Jehoshaphat's army. He was a soldier in Jehoshaphat's army and apparently he was a very diligent soldier. He was a very hard working soldier. He was a very loyal soldier. You say, Brother uh, Bob, how do you get that out of this verse? Well, because he was made the leader over 200,000 mighty men of valor. He rose to be the leader of all of these men, these soldiers of Judah. His name, the name Amasiah, simply means whom Jehovah bears. Isn't that a tremendous name? Whom Jehovah bears. It's like Jehovah has carried him, is carrying him, and is carrying him in his arms. He's bearing him up. Or we could look at it maybe this way, that that Amasiah was the kind of a young man that the Lord could give him a burden, give him a task, give him a job to do, and Amasiah would do it with his whole heart. He was such that God could give a burden and he would be able to bear it. The only phrase that describes Amasiah in the entire Bible is what we find in verse 16 where the Bible says, he willingly offered himself unto the Lord. It's the only thing we read about this man called Amasiah. His whole life, according to the Word of God, is summed up in that one phrase, who willingly offered himself unto the Lord. Now I wonder this afternoon, if your life, or if my life, were to be summed up with just one phrase, if at the end of our life someone could sum up our life by just one phrase, what would that one phrase be? Would it be, He loved the Lord? Would it be, She loved others? Or would it be, He was selfish? Or she was lazy? Or would it be, He loved His wife? She loved her children. She was a good Christian. He was a good parent. If your life could be summed up with just one phrase, what would that phrase be? Amasiah had the phrase, He willingly offered Himself unto the Lord. That is what Amasiah was known for, His willingness to serve the Lord. Amasiah is what I would like to call today or refer to as a consecrated Christian. Amasiah was a consecrated Christian. And we're going to look at this verse here in just a little bit. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 6. To be consecrated simply means to be set apart. It means to be dedicated to God for a specific purpose. To have God give you a specific assignment or a specific task or to set yourself apart to the, uh, for the things of God to be used by Him. Joshua chapter 6, look with me in verse 17. Joshua chapter 6, in verse 17, the Bible says, And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein. You remember the story where Joshua and the children of Israel were told to march on the city of Jericho. And God said, when you get there, you should not touch anything of the city. Leave it alone, he said. It is accursed. It is for me. And I want you to leave it alone completely. Verse 17. The city shall be accursed and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Verse 19, But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are, now here's the word, consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So when these things here, God said they are consecrated unto me, what He was saying is you cannot use these for anything else except what I have commanded that they be used for. In other words, they were to be put to no private use. They had to be used for the things of God. 
and they were used in the service of God. They were put into the treasury uh, of the Lord and then used later perhaps to make vessels and to make uh, implements for the temple perhaps or, or ornaments, whatever uh, they were made of. They were put into the treasury and God says you cannot use these things. They are mine. They are consecrated unto me. And the Bible tells us in second, uh, excuse me, in the book of Titus, chapter two, we won't take the time to turn there, but the Bible tells us that we are also consecrated unto the Lord. In Titus, chapter two, verses eleven through fourteen, the Bible says that you and I were redeemed by the precious blood of God, and He has set us apart to be a peculiar people. That word peculiar simply means that Jesus Christ now owns us. We are not our own. We are His. We are given unto Him. Jesus Christ redeemed us. He purchased us with the precious blood of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He purchased us with His own blood. If you're here this afternoon, if you've been saved, you have been redeemed. You have been bought with a price and you are not your own. The Bible says you're not your own. Therefore glorify God. Uh, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. That's what the Bible says. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. And so that means we're to glorify God in our spirit. We are consecrated unto Him in our body. We cannot use our body any way we want to use it. We cannot use it for our private use. That means we cannot go anywhere we want to go. That means we cannot simply do anything that we want to do and be and act any way we want to act. The Bible says we are a peculiar people. We are His own. Just like you might have a piece of property. Maybe you have something in your possession. Whether it be something small, uh, like an ink pen or a, uh, a book or, or something like that. And it is yours. You own that. That is your property. And that is something you can do with whatever you want to do with it. You can loan it out to somebody. You can use it for this, use it for that. But it's yours and so you can use it for whatever you want to do. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ bought us and paid for us and we are not our own we are his own and so now we're a peculiar people and means we are his property and we need to be yielded to do whatever he wants us to do that's why you have to live your lives clean and live your lives holy unto the Lord and stay away from all that the world has to offer out there so much that the devil wants to throw in your path to make you uh, not fit for the Master's use. You see, we are consecrated unto the Lord. We are vessels of honor for our God. And Satan wants to defile. Satan wants to destroy. And he wants to get us uh, to be uh, in such a way that God cannot use us anymore for His honor and His glory. God will not use a dirty vessel. But we are peculiar unto the Lord. We are His own. Because we are Christians... We ought to be different from the world. Amen? Yeah. We ought to be different. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. That's what he was talking to Joshua. He said, don't touch the unclean thing. Don't touch the accursed thing. It, it'll, it'll defile you. You and I as Christians, we need to be different. We need to be holy. We need to be separate from the world. When the world looks at you, they ought to be able to see something in you that's different from them. They ought to be able to say, that's a Christian young lady. That's a Christian young man. That's a Christian mom. That's a Christian dad. Or that's a Christian family. They ought to be able to see just by the look on your face. Your countenance ought to radiate the fact that you love God. Because we ought to be different. But here's what we need to understand this, more, uh, the, the, this afternoon. Just because we're different, we can look right, we can talk right, we can dress right, we can even act right. But that does not necessarily mean that we're consecrated unto the Lord. Amasiah, the Bible said, he willingly offered himself unto the Lord. He was a consecrated Christian because he said, God, I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. That's what I'm willing to do. He was willing. Probably he volunteered for the service of the Lord. He willingly offered himself unto the Lord. He said, God, here am I. 
send me. If you want me to be a Sunday school teacher, that's what I'll do. Amen. If you want me to ride in the jeepneys, that's what I'll do. If you want me to sing in the choir, that's what I'll do. If you want me to lead a discipleship uh, group, that's what I'll do. If you want me to preach, I'll preach for you. If you want me to go to the mission field, that's what I'll do. He said, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do because he was consecrated. He willingly gave himself to the Lord. Let me give you just three thoughts this morning. Three simple thoughts. First of all, a consecrated Christian loves God. A consecrated Christian loves God. Now, I'm not just talking about saying you love God. You know anybody can say you love God? We sing the song in our churches, Oh, how I love Jesus. And we sing it loud, and we sing it clear, and we sing it out very strong. But you know, just because you come to church and say, Oh, how I love Jesus, doesn't mean necessarily that you love Jesus. A lot of people in our world today are saying they love God, but they're not demonstrating their love for God by their life. It's a whole lot more to, to do what God says than to just say, Oh yes, Lord, I love you. We need to demonstrate our love for God by obeying the commands of the Word of God. Turn over to the New Testament book of John with me, please. John chapter 14. And let me read a couple of verses to you from the book of John. This wind is helping me turn my pages. John chapter 14, notice the first verse in verse 15. Very, very simple verse. Probably most of you have this memorized. The Bible says, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. How do we demonstrate that we love God? By keeping His commandments. Not just saying we love God. Not just telling God I love you, we, we show our love. We demonstrate our love to God by keeping His commandments. Look down to verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Now I know your pastor well enough to know that you get fed every week from the Word of God. And your pastor teaches you what you need to do to live according to the rules and the, or, or the principles and the truths of the Word of God. He, I know He does that. We have a choice. Are we going to do what the Word of God says? Or are we just going to hear what the Word of God says? James says that we are to be, what? Doers of the Word, not hearers only. Look at verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto Him and make our abode with Him. Many people say they love God, but they do not obey His Word. You know, the Bible tells us how we can live a life pleasing to God. The Bible tells us how we can live our lives in such a way that our lives will be an honor to our God. Sadly, some Christians decide they don't want to do that. Do you remember the parable Jesus told about the wise man and the foolish man? The wise man built his house on the rock. The foolish man built his house on the sand. Jesus said, He that heareth my words and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. And you remember the rest of the story where the rains came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and the house stood, did not fall. Then Jesus said, he that heareth my words and doeth them not, I will liken him to a foolish man. What we need to understand is both of those men, both of those people, the wise man and the foolish man, they both were in church on Sunday morning. They were both hearing the Word of God. Jesus said they both heard. He that heareth my words. What made the wise man wise and what made the foolish man foolish? The wise man was wise because he heard the Word of God and he did the Word of God. He doeth the Word of God. The foolish man was foolish because he heard the Word of God and he doeth not the Word of God. If you love God, simply put, you will keep His commandments. A consecrated Christian, a Christian who says, God, I want to willingly offer myself to You. Here I am. Use me for whatever you want to use me for. A consecrated Christian will love God. But secondly, a consecrated Christian 
will love others. A consecrated Christian will love others. Turn with me to the book of Romans in the Bible. Romans chapter 12. I can't tell what I wrote down here. I think I put verse 10, but I'm not sure. Yes. The Bible says, Be kindly affectioned one to another. Romans 12.10 be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. That means a Christian who's consecrated will put others first. Will say, I want you to have the best of this. I want you to go first. I want you to have this. When Brother Ruiz picked us up at the airport in Bacola City, we went out to eat in a, in a, to have breakfast. And Pastor John, how many of you remember Pastor John? He's going to be here. Yeah. Pastor... Uh, Pastor Robertson. He said to Brother Ruiz, he said, Brother Ruiz, he said, I do not want Mrs. Ruiz to fix her egg rolls until I get there. He said, I don't want them to have them until I get there. He said, also, I do not want Jemima to fix her mango float cake. I don't want these guys to have it until I get there. I said, huh? The mango? And the mango shakes. He said, no mango shakes. Until I get here. And I said, Brother John, you remember the Bible says that we ought to, in honor, prefer one another. So the Lord, in His mercy, in His wisdom, in His sovereignty, He led Mrs. Ruiz to make her egg rolls that first night. Wow, they were unbelievable. I had several. She, the next day, Jemima made her mango float cake. We also had the mango shakes. So Brother John learned a valuable lesson. In honor, preferring one another. What's that mean? That simply means that we put others first. We don't have to always have our own way, do we? We don't always have to be the first one in line or have the best of this. We can say, no, you go first. You have this. Turn over to 1 Peter. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Let me share this verse with you. And verse 22, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. That word unfeigned simply means you're genuine. It means you're real. That means you are what you are, what you see is what you get. You don't say one thing and then do another. You say what you mean and you mean what you say and you're real and you're genuine and you are uh, uh, just a blessing to others because of your genuine love. I certainly hope that the, the hellish influence of Hollywood has not permeated uh, this part of the world. I don't know if it has or not. But in Hollywood, in America, people say I love you so much and they don't mean it. It has no value. They say I, they say, I love you to this person one night. The very next night, I love you to this person. Another one. The very next night, the third, I love you. They don't mean it. There's no love. There's no genuineness there. It's just words. And when you and I are to be consecrated Christians, we're to demonstrate our love to God. We're to demonstrate our love to others and try to be a blessing to others. We're to put others first. We're to seek to serve others. I'm amazed as I've been here just for a few days how uh, the, the people here seek to serve others. We've been treated so good since we've been here. People just serving, people driving, people cooking, people serving, uh, people working here in the building. It's just been such a blessing to see people who are willing to serve and give of themselves to the Lord and to serve others. You know, somebody had to set all of this up. Somebody has to clean the building. Somebody had to uh, do all the things that perhaps you don't even know what's going on behind the scenes. Somebody had to do that. What a blessing that is. Thirdly, and lastly, a consecrated Christian is committed to edifying the local church. A consecrated Christian is committed to edifying the local church. And I want to try to be an encouragement to you here this afternoon. I am so amazed at what God is doing 
at Open Door Bible Baptist Church here in Sagai. I'm amazed at what he's doing. Amazed at the work here. Praise the Lord for that. Do you know what it means to edify? It means to build up. It means that I, as a Christian, I am trying to make my brothers and sisters in the Lord better Christians. I wonder if you ask yourself here this afternoon, how can I live in such a way as to make my brother in the Lord a better Christian? How can I live in such a way as to make my sister in the Lord a better Christian? That's our responsibility as a consecrated Christian, as we willingly give ourselves to the Lord, that we help others become better Christians to edify one another, to build up one another in the Lord. Now this is a marvelous building. What Praise the Lord that He's given this to you. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible talks about the stones in the temple being fitly joined together. And if you look at this wall over here, or the wall uh, along the side here, all of these blocks have a certain spot where they are fit together perfectly. And as you come to the end of a row and you have a block to put in, you might have to cut it to get it to fit uh, in that spot. You might have to cut part of it off. But it fits perfectly. And after it's all done, you see it fits perfectly there. We have a window. We have a door. All of it fits perfectly in the building. All of the stones of this building, all of the blocks in this building fit together perfectly. So this has become a place where the church can meet and the church can honor God and worship God and God can use this place for His honor and glory. Yes, now, we need to understand that as a church member, a member of Open Door Bible Baptist Church, we are fitly joined together just like these blocks. That means God has placed you in this place to help this church be exactly what God wants this church to be. All of you as members are fitly joined together. Maybe God would have to cut some things off of our life and said in order for you to fit right here in this place that I want for you, maybe He has to cut off some things in our life. Maybe He has to cut off and trim off some edges, some pride, or some bitterness, or some anger, or some unclean thoughts, or something like that. God has to cut it off and trim it up and polish it up and make it just perfect so that He can fit it right in the side of the wall there. So now you can be a member that is a blessing and helps to edify the church. Make the church everything that it ought to be by being everything that you ought to be here in this local church. You ought to be uh, helping your pastor and helping the leadership and helping one another be what they need to be. You see, the church building that you have here is a beautiful building. Thank God for that. But when we dismiss in a little bit, the church does not stay behind. The church goes into the community. The church goes into Sagai. And the church goes into the schools. And goes into the marketplace. And goes into the fields. And goes into the community. This is just the building that God has given us. So, or given you. So you need to understand that you are the church. And as a member of the church, you need to be an example of what God wants you to be here in your church. Somebody asked this question. Uh, one time in a message, and I think it's a very, very good question. What would your church be like if every other member of the church were just like you? What would the church be like if every member of my church back home was just like me? I wonder, do you give to the Lord? Do you sing praises to the Lord? Uh, if you don't sing and every other member was like you, it'd be pretty tough during the song service. Wow. If you, if you are a member that doesn't give, how would the work of God go on? If every other member were just like you, what would this church be like? You need to resolve in your heart to be a consecrated Christian and make this church what it ought to be by being the very best Christian that you can be. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse 1, the Bible says, Be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. Every one of us in here need to live our lives in such a way that we can tell others, follow me as I follow Christ. If you want to know what a Christian is supposed to do, you just watch me. You look at me and then as I follow Christ, we'll 
we'll follow Christ together. That's the kind of Christian that we need to be. Consecrated Christians. Christians that are dedicated and willing to give themselves and offer themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. A consecrated Christian loves God. A consecrated Christian will love others. And a consecrated Christian will be committed to edifying or building up the local church. Turn with me to Second, or excuse me, First Chronicles, chapter twenty-nine. I want to ask you a question that is found in this book, First Chronicles, chapter twenty-nine. God wants consecrated Christians. You and I today can become consecrated Christians if we'll simply be willing to give ourselves. Look, please, with me in verse 5. The gold for things of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of the artificers. Now notice this last phrase. Will you read it with me? Will you read this with me? Let's read. And who then is willing to consecrate His service this day unto the Lord? That's the question I want to ask you and me and all of us here today. Who then is willing to consecrate His service or her service this day unto the Lord? Will you be a consecrated Christian? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love You. We thank You for the, the precious words.